everyone. Um, sometimes what we do in uh, what we do at Artifact in our in our studio up in Seattle is we look into the future at intersections of big economic, technology, and social trends to gain some foresight into what's coming next. Now, while what we envision at that future intersection may be very aspirational, from this position of foresight, we can work backwards to bend current design and development to more positive outcomes and a preferable future. Um, and that is the essence of 21st century design, the philosophy that guides us in our work at Artifact, which we apply to areas like healthcare. So when we look at healthcare, we see many positive pieces, but they are disconnected. So the industry is shifting to outcomes, which will bring value to patients over time. And the devices that we're using are, regarding our health generate more and more data each day. So patients are becoming more savvy and invested in their care. And we are understanding more and more about the factors that contribute to our health and how they can be managed. So these are all positive things, but we don't see them coming together quick enough or in the right ways to provide real impact, to pro to provide real impact in the lives of people who need it. So as you know, Though we are living longer, we're not necessarily living healthier. So chronic conditions are dramatically on the rise. Almost half of all adults in the US are living with at least one chronic condition, and one in four live with multiple chronic conditions. Yet even though many of us have chronic conditions, we still live our lives to the fullest degree possible. So chronic conditions are important not just because of their prevalence, and how they impact our lives, but also because of the financial burden that they place on both the system and the individual. So chronic conditions, as you all know, have big impact on our, on our nation's healthcare cost. And the average healthcare spending for an individual with three chronic conditions is actually six times more compared to those without any chronic conditions. So the industry is trying to, the industry is increasingly being held accountable for outcomes but it's the decisions that we make as patients in these 5,000 waking hours per year that we are not in front of a doctor. So while this pressure of cost has been at play, we've seen technology support an explosion in connected devices for health. And there's great interest in this category, obviously. Um, but though all these devices and apps have enabled us to acquire more data about ourselves, we're still trying to figure out how to use those data uh, to lasting benefit. So despite how connected devices have this unyet realized potential, we're increasingly making connections to other people for inspiration and for information regarding our health. So polls conducted in 2015 by Institute of Medicine show that while security and privacy, and privacy are definitely a concern, the large majority of patients are willing to share health data with other patients with similar health concerns. So we even increasingly look for other people who are like us to help us deal with our health. So if those are some of the big trends, what about the actual experiences of individuals? So thinking about the individual patient. It would seem that the experiences we have as individuals are very different depending on what the condition is that we are living with. So consider a patient living with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and this is the image that you see on the right. And think about what it takes for him to go on a simple outing, for example, for him to go to the mall. So he needs to have his ventilator. Uh, it needs to be in its vinyl cover to protect the ventilator from the elements. Uh, he also needs to have a personal oxygen system, a suction machine, and a pulse oximeter. He's also going to need his caregiver to be available to drive the van with the hydraulic lift uh, to wherever it is that he wants to go. So it's a whole lot to think about, and it's a whole lot to handle. So now consider a patient living with hypertension. So this is the image that you see on the right. So his care tasks may just be taking medications twice a day and testing his blood pressure at home once a week, and that's it. That's basically what he needs to do. So these seem like such different experiences that we have as patients, but despite how different the diagnoses are, the tasks are, and the outlook may be for these different chronic conditions, there are some shared commonalities in what we experience as patients. So the phases that we go through are universal, and they have similar goals and challenges independent of what the specific chronic condition is. So first, there's usually a period before we're diagnosed uh, when we may sense that something is wrong. So this is the discovery phase and it has the focus of moving from abstractions, like trying to figure out what's actually going on, to being able to visualize what your future life will be like with this chronic condition. Next, once the condition is actually known, is a stage of understanding when you're trying to get a better grasp of how the condition will actually impact your life 
and what will be required to, to manage it. So this includes things like understanding symptoms and also learning how to manage um, things like uh, thresholds and how to avoid triggers. So in engaging in big life changes, for example, taking a job that introduces new stress or moving to a city with more air pollution may throw your condition out of balance and whatever you had as a previous understanding may be lost. So this last phase here is the action phase. And this is when you're taking very specific actions regarding your condition. So this includes things like reacting to a home test. So imagine a person living with type 1 diabetes um, uh, testing his blood glucose. Um, and it also relates to things like deciding how much medicine you're going to take. So for example, think of a patient who lives with Parkinson's deciding how much uh, carbidopa to take. So this is the phase of everyday living. And in this phase, encountering simple variations, like eating at a new restaurant or having to run to the bus stop, may present challenges because the variables are so complex, the number of decisions to be made are so great, and because the consequences of poor decision making can be so detrimental. So many people think that uh, variety is the spice of life. And for lots of people and in lots of ways, that's actually true. But when you think about chronic conditions, variety is actually risk. So is there something we can do to address the opportunity presented in these universal patterns and common challenges of living with chronic conditions? In particular, given the pressure of the industry to reduce costs in those 5,000 waking hours between doctor visits, since the full potential of device connectivity is still unrealized, and especially since such strong invested communities are emerging in health. So what if we could see and use the experiences of others to create more positive outcomes for our health. Now this is chronicle, and this is just one vision for how we might accelerate the promise of M Health. So chronicle helps people quickly gain meaningful insights and make more effective decisions regarding their chronic conditions using real-time shared data. Chronicle is the concept of a cloud-based platform and a smartphone app that integrates environmental, connected device, measured biometric, and self-reported data from people with shared health factors. So it would use predictive analytics and a recommendation engine. Chronicle would be able to create insights about data from past events, current states, and future risks. So what's key in Chronicle is the ability to leverage in real time the shared data of, uh, shared data of others who are like you so you can quickly gain meaningful insights and make more effective decisions regarding your own chronic conditions. So this is very aspirational and very abstract, so we'll make it a little bit real by looking at a very specific situation where Chronicle would help. So picture Olivia. Uh, Olivia is a retired woman who lives on Lower Queen Anne, which is a neighborhood on a hill in Seattle. And Olivia has COPD, which means that her lungs don't transfer enough oxygen to her blood. So she uses a personal oxygen system like this one. It has cannula that go around her ears, or go around her ears and into her nose, and continuously gives her concentrated oxygen, making her more comfortable at day, during the day, and also at night. So the personal oxygen system has different settings that deliver different amounts of oxygen per breath. And when Olivia is active, she can turn up the setting and get more oxygen. If she doesn't get enough oxygen, she feels short of breath, like there's a pile of bricks that are weighing on her chest. And it's happened before, and she's had to call an ambulance for help. So one afternoon, Olivia checks the oxygen level of her blood using her pulse oximeter. And, and since her saturation level was good, she decides to go outside for a walk. And after walking about a block from her apartment, Olivia comes to a corner. And at this corner, she has two paths before her. To her right is a walk directly up Queen Anne Hill. And Olivia thinks about how at the top of, her, of the hill is her favorite coffee shop and a great view of the Seattle skyline. So to her left from that corner is a path on a flat sidewalk that just goes around the block. All right, and this one just goes by some apartment buildings and then a strip mall with the dry cleaners and then a few parking garages, so not nearly as interesting as the walk up the hill. If Olivia does take that long and steep walk up the hill, she's taking on risks because it's a more strenuous route and because she's never walked directly up that hill before. And there's a number of different factors that are going to drive the outcome of her decision. 
things like what her current blood oxygen saturation level is, what her total lung capacity is, what the current flow rate and on her personal oxygen system was, how, mo how recently she used her bronchodilator, even things like the current air temperature and the humidity, and simply how long and steep the walk is up the hill. So standing on the corner that afternoon, how is Olivia supposed to know which choice to make since she has never been in this exact situation with these exact factors ever before? So here's some of our thinking on what the Chronicle app could be and also how it would help Olivia. And we'll start with sort of what the main, the main interface screen is of the experience. So first is access to a profile, which allows a definition to the comparative group that Olivia would be compared to. Insights highlight key facts, which may change depending on what the uh, activity is or what the context Olivia is in. Considerations offer guidance on what Olivia should think about next. Trends compare, compare you to others like you with the shared health concerns and factors. And the navigation on the bottom emphasizes core areas of interest that Olivia might want to explore. So in the insight that's presented here, you can see that Olivia is gaining the understanding that outside air temperature is actually one of the key factors that's going to contribute to the outcome of her standing on that corner as she makes her decision. So making good decisions and having deep understanding are based on seeing into the past, having some foresight into the future, and easily recording uh, what's happening now. So Chronicle dedicates navigation to these goals. So the history button on the bottom shows uh, past experiences as trends. The add button in the middle enables users to currently report or to report what's happening currently. And the track button is about up understanding upcoming risks. So when a patient decides she needs extra monitoring or guidance, for example, as Olivia starts to walk up that up, her, up, the, up Queen Anne Hill, she can turn on turbo tracking. And this mode would collect higher fidelity data and give different types of insights for a designated period based specifically on what the area of inquiry was. So in some ways, this is visibility into the future, since Chronicle will be able to give Olivia timely warnings or to communicate the outcomes of other people like her who have taken on those same risks. So our first design principle for a solution like, like Chronicle is that the insights it offers should be meaningful, both at a macro level, which is about understanding the condition better, and at a micro level, which is about taking more informed action in the moment. We don't just want to offer insights from the system. We also want to enable people to dig into past events, which would help them trust the system even more. So it's a small detail, but Chronicle would also let people make quick access to quickly access um, uh, changes to their profile easily and at any time. So this lets people define sort of who they're compared to. So let's say Olivia goes to the doctor and she learns that her total lung capacity is actually improved. She should be able to make that change in her profile. So our second principle is that Chronicle needs to be extensible by design. It needs to be extensible in how data boundaries are drawn to represent other people and how it allows for a variety of different devices to be connected and in how it supports different goals we may have for our health. Throughout the experience, we also want people to be able to explore different conditions all at once since uh, our journey as a patient is unknown and as chronic, as chronic conditions progress, they often uh, introduce other complications and comorbidities. But the real value of Chronicle is in the insights, because the people who have chosen to participate see the benefit in trading off their personal private data for access to a larger set of data from which to gain understanding about themselves, which are delivered in the flow of everyday life. So in our last guiding principle for Chronicle is that it be driven by democracy, that the experience itself should be defined and populated by the actual people who would be using it. This is sort of the main experience with Chronicle. So we are at this interesting intersection where there's a number of big uh, lasting trends that cut across major aspects of our lives like technology and culture are all happening at once. That's sort of the big landscape. Uh, what's happening to us as people is equally important and that's that we need innovations like this more than ever to manage the increasing complexity of our health. So why do we do projects like this? So at Artifact, we do envisioning work like Chronicle to inspire the industry and to provoke meaningful conversations, but we also do it to, to further our own thinking. 
From envisioning a potential future like Chronicle, we can see some of the complex issues that will arrive in this kind of a solution. And we can start to explore questions like these. So as patients have increased access to information and as critical care devices are increasingly moving from the hospital to the home, there's a shift towards patients driving more of their own care decisions. So technology enables it, but what are the drawbacks of patients driving their own care? And how might the role of a clinician or a physician need to change to continue to add value in this kind of a new world? More data from delivery devices, quick pilot studies via mobile apps, and an increasing willingness for patients to share data can enable a much deeper understanding of the fingerprint of certain chronic conditions that were previously hard to understand. So think about things like epilepsy or Parkinson's disease or Crohn's disease. So how does healthcare change when we can have a finer definition of these conditions and these patient types? Who should own the data where we can see these new patterns and these new types of fingerprints? And last, low impact sensing technology, machine learning and the miniaturization of components like batteries and processors and pumps and motors have enabled wearables to close the loop of medication delivery. So this future has been discussed as sort of the holy grail in chronic condition management for a while because it's all about reducing that patient burden. But what are the unintended outcomes of, as technology approaches being able to manage conditions autonomously? What is the line between reducing burden and causing apathy or disinterestedness? Does a closed loop mean the loss of our identities from what we have accomplished in dealing with our chronic conditions thus far? So these are some of the hard questions that a vision like Chronicle forces us to ask. So at Artifact, we are excited about answering these kinds of questions and about designing for positive outcomes and a preferable future, especially regarding things that are so important to us, like our health. And we hope that Chronicle, which is, again, just one concept vision for what a potential future would be of accelerating M health, we hope that it inspires discussions and also collaboration in the industry that moves us all closer to this uh, ideal future that we all, we all desire. Thanks. That's, that's a great question. We don't, we don't know at what point you'd start to see some of these patterns, but I even just think about some very specific, some very specific situations that I've been in where I think about my, um, uh, sort of who I am as a person and, and, and my health, uh, and there's other people who have been in similar situations with similar core attributes as me who have made similar decisions. And if I were able to see some of that history and sort of what the outcomes of their decisions were, I think it would be helpful for me personally. So I don't know sort of what the size would be, but I just know from that there would be some value in starting to sort of explore what some of those connections would be. Yep. Yeah. So if we were to do something like develop Chronicle, Again, it's just sort of a concept vision. If we were to pursue it, the way we would do it would be by picking one condition that has a number of these different attributes that we can start to measure and track. So think about things like Parkinson's, if you're able to sort of see when a patient takes, takes their doses, when the symptoms start to come on, you'd be able to start to see some of these patterns. So it would be selecting one single condition and sort of going deep with that and really learning about that before opening it up or broadening it to a range of different chronic conditions. Yeah, so again, it's, we, so the only user input we have is just um, more from a design uh, research perspective. Um, so we don't have this, it's not in the world, it doesn't exist, it's more of a vision, no worries. Um, but I think that would be one of the great things to, that we would be able to learn from something like Chronicle is sort of how, how, how are all these other and the value of some of the insights that you can see from a system before opening it up to a large enough data, to a large enough uh, population where you'd be able to actually um, overlay uh, adherence data from connected delivery devices and start to track things like, for example, um, uh, A1C in a type 1 di uh, patient who lives with type 1 diabetes or sort of the on or off periods of a person who lives with Parkinson's. So we definitely recognize that sort of the quantitative proof 
is part that would need to be part of, of, of what the platform, platform actually supports. Absolutely.